Well, hello again there, everybody. Brandon here coming to you. So I've got another video going on today. Actually, I've got one producing uh, back there as we speak, um, a different video going on. But the one we're about to look at is going to be a full-length, real-time walkthrough of this Carolina Wren here. So this particular painting was one that I put together for my mom's birthday this year. And out of this, I did a couple of um, breakout videos from it. So... If you want to check out the process of painting this wren and want to paint along with me, let's go do that now. So we've been working on, this is essentially what the finished product is looking like. A barn scene here off in the distance with a little bit of foggy atmosphere back there and a Carolina Wren up in the foreground. So I thought I'd do a video here showing my process of painting that bird. Now, it's the first time I've ever painted a Carolina Wren before. I've done numerous other birds, mostly bluebirds and cardinals and uh, hummingbirds and some eagles and things. So using a source photo for reference for the colors on this bird. Um, if you want to paint along with me on this one, I'm going to be doing this Carolina Wren here using a source photo here to get the coloration right. So I'm going to be using some basic colors here, uh, burnt umber and, well, raw umber, I should say, raw umber, burnt sienna comes into play, and then yellow ochre, titanium white, and black is really all the colors I used on this particular bird. So that's the colors you're going to need if you want to paint along with me on this one. If you want to paint a different bird, the process is exactly the same. If you don't know what the colors are on your bird, if you haven't painted one before, get you a good uh, source photo, a couple of reference photos to see what the colors are. And then we're going to block the bird in initially with all the darker tones that you see. So the, if you look at the bird itself, what the darkest areas are in there in terms of color is what we're going to block it in with first. And then we'll lay the lighter, lighter highlights over over the top of it. So. Um, I'm going to get started here on this Carolina Wren. If you want to paint along with me on this one, let's do that. If not, get your colors ready for your bird and just follow along the process and we will hopefully make that happen. Alright, so I've been working on a little bit of a larger painting here. It's a scene with a little bit of a foggy background on a barn and some trees back there. But for this video here, we're going to focus in on this bird that I've got going on. So this is going to be a Carolina Wren. Uh, I have not painted a Carolina Wren before, so I'm using uh, reference photos to make sure I'm getting my colors in the right spots and in the right places. So with all of my bird paintings, I start with a little simple pencil sketch there where I've got some lines penciled in just letting me know where I'm putting what colors. Um, if you're going to be doing a Carolina Wren here with me, uh, that's great. We're going to be uh, working here mostly with uh, black and yellow ochre and raw umber and some titanium white. And I'm coming here and put my eyeball in to start out with. Um, this is basically just straight black that I'm putting in so I don't lose my eye. And now if you're doing a different bird, the process here will be the same. Uh, you'll just be using different colors, obviously. But I'm going to go in now with a... Um, this is an angled brush here I'm going to be using for the larger blocking in layer. I'm going to be using a, a half inch angled brush. And I'm going to be um, blocking in the darker colors in the areas that they're supposed to go in. Um, so first here I'm just going to come in um, the back of this wing here and um, come in here with some raw umber and basically just put this darker color in along this back of this wing and really I'm just trying to put in the darker shaded tones in here that I will come back in and highlight over so I'm trying to put in the darkest colors that I see in each of these areas we've got this darker color um, comes in top of the head here carries down pretty much all the way to the beak here it looks like and 
and realistically the whole back of this wing all the way down here to the tip is dark and some darkness along the bottom here And if you keep your brush strokes uh, the direction that the feathers are going, so like here for instance I'm making my brush strokes in the direction that these feathers would be laying on this wing, if you have any lines that show up, uh, brush strokes that show up later in the process here, everything will look a little more realistic as long as your feathers uh, or your brush strokes are in the same direction that the feathers on that particular spot are going. So here there's some smaller stuff going in here, uh, some smaller feathers, so I'm just going to keep this short little uh, choppy kind of brush stroke in here because these smaller feathers that are located in this area, my brush stroke lines that show up will give me a little more realistic look. Um, and the tail back here, so the same deal is I'm going to turn my brush here and I'm working the angle uh, the same direction these feathers on the tail would be laying back here. And again, this is to keep the direction of my brush strokes the same direction of my feathers so that anything that shows up in here, when we layer on additional highlights, it'll just add to the realistic uh, quality that this is bird feathers that are laying in here. So just pay attention to what area of the bird you're painting. You know, if you're on the tail, make the feathers go this, you know, the direction that the tail feathers would be, and the wing, uh, the direction the wing would be. <clears throat> excuse me, when we get up to the body here, we'll change the direction of, again, obviously, and work with much uh, smaller, shorter brush strokes on the, the body of this bird. But these blocking in processes um, are just, again, getting the proper colors in the proper places. And then we'll be able to layer up from here. And we can come back in and fix our edges and clean up some stuff if we need to. Um, once we get into our detailing process, so I'm not going to have to worry about necessarily perfect edges right now. I'm just touching in a little bit of uh, black here along the edges of that tail and that wing because I see in my photo there's some black spots there. I'm just going to remind myself to come back to it later. Uh, so back into raw umber here behind this eye. That carries all the way to the back and comes down along in this area. And again, just keeping the brush strokes kind of short here, short, choppy, uh, in the direction that it looks like uh, that these feathers would be laying here. Pretty much the whole back of this wing is going to be dark. And again, I would say, you know, if you're not painting this particular bird or whatever bird you're painting, just get you a couple of good reference photos to make sure you get these colors in the right places. Um, and it looks like up here we have brown in front of this eye that comes out a little bit. And a line that kind of extends from it out onto the beak itself here along the top. Now for this body in here, I think I'm going to 
Uh, stick with some burnt umber here along the midsection of the bottom and keep it fairly dark but I'm going to add some yellow ochre here into the mix to lighten it up just a little bit uh, create a little bit more of a golden looking color here on the the body and belly and chest of this bird and as I go further up I'll lighten this up a little bit but for now I'm going to start with uh, a little man eh, that's still a little too dark right there let me add a little bit more yellow ochre to this mix that's maybe a little better so I'm going to cover the midsection to the bottom here of the front of this bird with this darker color here. And again, I'm keeping these brush strokes just kind of short, um, choppy uh, brush strokes here with this angled brush to create whatever feather texture may show up in the brush strokes will be in the proper direction here. Try to carry this darker color all the way down to the bottom. I'm basically just tapping it in here along this edge. Something like that. I want my darkest tones here to be right along the bottom. And then as we move up here, we will start adding more yellow ochre into this mix. You can see how these little short brush strokes in here kind of create that little um, texture, that feather texture that we're looking for here on this body, which is why I said keep your brush angled in the right direction here that these feathers would be laying and just make short choppy little brush strokes like this and it creates that feather texture almost automatically for you. And then even as we highlight over it, we just kind of use the same process and the end result looks pretty good, I think. A little darker area right in here. And above this area it's mostly white, but we'll deal with that in a second. I'm just kind of lightening this mix up here, make sure I've got plenty of my yellow ochre back in here. This will be the lightest or the more golden looking area. That gives us a pretty good transition of block in color there from light to dark. Uh, now let's see this This area here in the middle is mostly a, a kind of a white color here. So I'm going to be using um, in this area kind of a creamy um, color that I'm just going to use a mix I've been using and add titanium white to it because it's not going to be just straight white, obviously. Um, but we do need a shadow color in here. So that's the same mix we've been using on this angle brush here. I'm just adding white to it and creating this. Uh, kind of a creamy color here that we'll be using for our shadow color in this area here that's mostly white. I'm just kind of block in this area. This comes all the way up to the bottom of his bill here. I'm 
We also have the same color here right above the eye. So we'll bring that in here. Now I think I'm done here with this larger brush. I'm going to switch to the smaller brush here to tighten in some of this a little bit here with this burnt umber. So I've moved now to my little quarter inch angled brush just so I can work in these smaller spaces here. And we need to deal with the bill of our bird here, which is, uh, it's got a couple of different colors going on in it. It looks like there's some grays in there. And maybe a hint of some browns in there. But we're trying to create a, a block in layer here that's just kind of our basic darker tones. I'm going to come along the bottom edge here with the darkest. There's like a dark line here that comes up right along this bottom edge that kind of defines the bottom of the beak comes out to the tip here and kind of has a bit of um, that line here on the top as well I'm going to lighten this up a little bit here to do the middle section. Dropping in some titanium white here. It's not quite light enough. It's still a little too dark. That's a little better. I just kind of a muted grayish brown value here that I'm going to put in here for the rest of this beak. Because we'll be laying our highlights again on top of this. That's pretty good. I'll just bring it back here to fill the rest in. And it's kind of a broken edge back there along the back where his feathers start to come in. You can't really tell a sharp line there, so. Now, really, the only thing we have left here on our blocking layer is to get something on these legs and these feet. Um, there's, I don't know, it's kind of that same grayish color we've been working with. Looks like there might be a pinkish kind of hue to their legs. Maybe I'll add just a touch of red um, to that mix that we were using there for that, that bill. And come down here and drop it in on these legs and see what we get. That's pretty good, I think, for just an initial blocking in color anyway. We're just going to define where these legs are sitting here. Come down here to the top of our post. And there's some feet down in here that are going to be sitting. They have like a couple of toes that come off the front and one that hangs off the back. Uh, so we'll drop in the one here off the back and then drag a couple of things across the front here where we're going to stick some claws in on. Now this leg here on the front side, ultimately you'll see it come up here into the feathers a little bit. So I'm going to carry it up into the feathers there. The one on the back side back there, you won't see it go above. So we're just going to end it right there. So that has now got us uh, an initial blocking in layer here of our bird of our darker tones. We're going to kind of let that dry and come back and start detailing out over it with some lighter colors. But that's essentially what I do on any bird. So if you've got another bird that you're working on, uh, get yourself to a point where your initial blocking in layer is done with your darker tones. And then we'll come back in here and start working on individual little sections and um, just one layer at a time detail this thing out.
All right, so we're going to get started here detailing out this wren here. Now I'm going to start working on the tail um, first, and I'm going to continue to work with my small little uh, quarter-inch angled brush here. And I'll start detailing out this tail a little bit. And um, so I want to keep my brush strokes here moving again in the direction that these feathers are going, um, which is down along this line here. And um, you know, as I as I work through here, it's just a matter of putting in lighter colors and darker colors here that will essentially give the appearance that there's feathers through here in this section. Uh, it looks like a kind of a variegated pattern that, that comes through here of lighter and darker tones on these tails of these wrens um, <clears throat> that just gives an interesting look to it. So I am going to first thing I think I'm going to do is um, darken up a spot here um, where these feathers are kind of overlapping right in here where these top feathers are kind of shading out this bottom one <clears throat> excuse me so I'm gonna just bring in a dark line right in here to about that point and now I see at the base of this tail here there's kind of some feathers coming from the from the body of the bird that just kind of muddy up um, the base of this tail so it's like the feathers right in here are not necessarily moving in the same direction as the rest of those tail feathers and so I'm gonna add um, I might add a little bit of burnt sienna here because it's starting to redden things up a little bit and I'm gonna come in here where the base of this tail is closer to the body and I'm just going to um, drop in some color right in here where it looks like the directions of those feathers are not necessarily uh, the same as the rest of the tail back there. These right in here are just kind of choppy looking so I'm just going to kind of touch this color in right in this particular area. Looks like it goes to about in there. And then to the rest of that tail feather, we're going to be working that bottom edge where we've got like a, a broken line of, of almost a white and black going on back through here. And I need to lighten some stuff up here. Um, so I'm going to bring in a little bit of titanium white to this mix. And I've still got some burnt umber going on here. And uh, we're going to just start dropping in some lighter color here to see what kind of highlight effects we get. It's almost the creamy color consistency that we blocked in our white with here. And we're going to touch that along here on the tops of these feathers. Just to give a little bit of highlight here on these tips. And again, I'm working my brush strokes in the angle that these feathers are laying here. some of this area down here along the bottom there's a there's white that's broken up with these little black um, bars of color in there and so it'll probably take a couple of passes here to kind of make that look right there's some brighter bands of white rod right here along the edge that you can see and then I'll have to come back in and kind of break these up with the black lines that are in there. Looks to be like just one or two feathers along the edge that have that going on with it on this Carolina Wren. Now I'm going to break it back up with the darker bands in between. Something to that effect. Looks like there's a couple of darker bands across these tips too that kind of break that color up. I 
I think that's probably good. And again, the level of detail you put on these birds is kind of up to you. You know, I'm doing what's making me happy on level of detail here. You can come in here and, and work um, more of an abstract looking thing if you want and don't worry about sharp edges and, and just kind of put color suggestions where they're supposed to be and, and that work for you. I'm going to try to, I try to lean towards realism when I can. So I'm going to put in at least enough detail to make it um, look as realistic as possible here for me until the point that I'm happy with it. <clears throat> Now I'm going to start to work on these little kind of golden looking um, lighter barred areas coming down this tail feather here. So I'm going back into mostly some yellow ochre here now with a hint of that burnt umber with it. And there's these interesting little um, almost kind of V-shaped or U-shaped looking little bars that come down the back of this tail here of lighter color. So I'm going to work my way down this back tail feather with this and just kind of drop some of these places in here. You want to leave some dark area here in between and just kind of touch as you go down here to create this segmented look that it's got going on. And there's a few areas down along through here that this lighter color seems to be poking out. Um, and I mean, I'm just kind of randomly touching this in. I don't think it really matters a whole lot where these go. I mean, this bird could change the appearance of his feathers pretty quickly if he just kind of ruffled them a little bit probably and these things would look slightly different. So and you can see a little bit along the top edge here, the same kind of thing going on. And it looks like this lighter color kind of extends across these feathers here. I'm just going to drop in a little line here between these things. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect here. I'm just dropping in color in the areas that it looks like it lands. So just kind of randomly putting it in a few places here. There's obviously some kind of feathers layered going on back in here, so there's going to be some overlapping of color going on. And it's pretty light along this bottom edge here. And these bigger pieces, like I said, they're kind of almost like a U shape or V shape right here, so I'm going to try to create that look. something like that. Now in between all of this, this color has gotten a good bit redder here, so I'm going to bring some burnt sienna back into the mix here and start dropping that more reddish color in between all of this. And again, this is just a process of kind of going back and forth and putting color in. So just kind of paint what you see. I mean, that's really all it is. And so I'm going to put in this redder color all the way down through this tail feather. But I'm not blocking out all of that dark um, block in layer, though. That's still going to show through here in some of this stuff. And we just keep adding to our color layers here and working one little section at a time. I 
think I want to redden this up a little bit more here and brighten things up just a tad bit. So, added a little more burnt sienna in here. And we'll color that in basically between our more brighter golden highlights. And just kind of bring that color in. Tap it in in some of this other area. Again, there's like layered feathers going on in here. So just kind of tapping in this color kind of creates that effect. Doesn't have to be anything specific. Now I think I'm pretty much um, happy for that tail for now. I'm going to move on here to this wing. And um, we're really just doing the same kind of process again. I'm going to be using this uh, small angled brush here and I'm going to come along these uh, front edges with that same kind of mottled black and white look that's on the bottom of this tail here. It looks like the same thing's going along here at the bottom of this wing. And then the rest of this wing is kind of uh, more of that burnt sienna reddish color coming in and uh, just creating some highlights of that golden areas as well to give it a layered feather look. The first thing I'm going to do here is I need to create some separation in like a, a shaded area underneath that wing, I think, um, just so I can define where my edge is going to be. So I'm going to go into some raw umber here and a little bit of that yellow ochre, and I'm going to create me a little darker shaded area underneath that wing where his wing is kind of shading the body out. So let's come right underneath here. Just make us a line of, um, like I said, just a shaded body underneath there. And this will establish our edge of where our wing is. Something to that effect. And you can see more shade or shadow here along the bottom edge, this bottom left corner. So I'm going to bring it down a little further because his wing is hanging off a little further from the body right here. So I uh, bring that shadow out a little further. Now we need to deal with that front leading edge where that kind of white and black barred look is going on again. So I've gone back into some of the titanium white and a little bit of the raw umber to create a creamy kind of color there. Almost pure white but not quite and we're going to put our little bands of that whiter color in here along this edge. And I think Let's see. I'm trying to decide. It looks like there might be more than one feather in there. That looks like there's a second one or two here that maybe the same thing kind of goes on behind it. So we'll put a little indication of a second one back there that the same thing is going on. Now I'm just going to darken up those bands in the middle a little bit here with a little more black. I think that is sufficient. So now I'm going to start bringing in the yellow ochre highlight here, some more yellow ochre to golden it up and start highlighting out the edges of these feathers here behind it and maybe draw some a couple of individual feathers in right here behind there. It looks like you can see a couple of individual feathers that are kind of laying down here. And I may have to come back and separate these things out with a darker line here when I'm done. We'll see. But this color kind of drops in and uh, I mean, there's a lot of different feathers going on along this side that you can kind of see this golden highlight color. There's a few feathers here up towards the top of the wing that are separated out, it looks like, um, that are with this color. So I'm going to kind of draw in their shape here roughly with it. 
there's one up in here that kind of comes down drops in like in that area and then there's another one or two here right in front of it uh, there's just a couple of random ones right in there that you can see and maybe they come down around in there and again you know you don't have to be real specific about this color placement and just kind of get some color in some areas that are close because again this this bird could fluff this wing up and lay it back down and these would be slightly different so i'm just going to drop in color along the back here where it looks like a lot of this golden kind of highlight is showing and you still have your dark that's coming through here beneath this so you still have a layered effect here as long as you don't cover everything up now along the bottom tip of this wing this, the feathers look a, a, li a little bit more with that red burnt sienna color here so I'm gonna go back into the burnt sienna here and draw in a few feathers here along this tip it's got that more reddish color going on right here along the bottom and this color looks like it comes in right up here in one or two spots above these other feathers along this edge where we can kind of see a little bit more of this reddish highlight going on and there's a little bit of it up in here along these as well so just you know where you see this color in it's along the back just kind of drop it in scrub it in a little bit the more you vary it up here in some of this stuff the more realistic it'll end up looking when it's all said and done so this whole back of this wing here in the back of the birds kind of got that reddish tint going on and I'm going to try to define out these couple of wings right in here with this reddish color paint it in and then finish off the back of the wing here just scrubbing some more of that color in Now this area behind his eye definitely has a lot of this more redder color in, so let's bring in the, that color here and scrub in some behind this eye. And it works its way down here, keeps coming, drops into this area a little bit. Now these couple of feathers are a little more defined here along the front edge of this wing right in here. It looks like I need to bring in um, a little bit of a whiter highlight. Um, we're going to cream this out a little bit and brighten it up a little bit with some titanium white. There's some edges right in here that I want to paint in just along the tips of these individual feathers right here that look like they're catching a little bit of highlight. So we're going to bring that in here. There's like one or two places in here you can see some more white hanging out kind of in that area and the edge of this kind of reddish feather here along the front end you can see um, a little triangular shaped wing right here that I'm gonna kind of mark that out And the tops of these wings in here look like they're catching a little bit more of that lighter color highlight. So let's hit, or excuse me, these feathers right in here. We'll paint that in. And again, you just kind of keep adding this color here where you see it. Now I can see that my white line here off the top of his eye extends all the way to the back. So let me get some of that mix. Basically, it was titanium white with a touch of that raw umber to it here and let's extend this line here and all the way to the back of the bird here all right now I'd say that that's got me a pretty good starting point here for the tail and this wing um, at least with this angled brush that I've been using I'm probably now gonna need to switch over uh, to finish detailing some of that out with a smaller brush so um, I think this one for now is going to require me to move to I've got like a somewhere around here I have a spotter brush I think I've got a little 10 aught spotter brush here this is actually a 5 aught spotter brush 
So I'm going to use that to kind of finish detailing out this um, where I need to get into some small spaces um, around here to just clean up some of these edges a little bit. Now again, um, you could probably leave it at this point if you want and, and say that that's perfectly sufficient. Um, it's just whatever makes you happy here. So I'm going to kind of clean up some of these edges here with this smaller brush and just detail out a few things here and there um, just to make make it the uh, way I want it to look because I just got to get to the point where I'm happy with it is the main thing. So if you're happy with the way yours looks then call it done. But I'm going to come in here and sharpen up a few edges right here. Um, basically just kind of clean up some lines. I'm going to bring in some of this color here along this edge of this bottom tail feather. And this bird is kind of the foreground most prominent thing in this particular painting. So I'm wanting to add just a few touches here and there of some detail that add to it because it's, it's the most obvious thing that's the focus of the painting here. So before I move on here, I'm going to touch up some of this. I need to lighten this area of the tail feather a little bit. come in here where I've got this separation with these darker lines. And this is just basically titanium white with a little bit of that raw umber in it. I need to draw this line down a little further here. Now I think I need to sharpen my dark lines up a little bit. So I basically just went into some black and a touch of raw umber here and I'm just going to define out these little dark bars here a little bit better. Sharpen the edges on them just a little. Again just cleaning up some edges is all I'm doing. Now I kind of feel like I need to bring in a little bit more white here along this edge. Sharpen it up just a little bit. Maybe along the top right there. Alright. Now I'm happy with that. Again, so that's what counts. So I'm going to move on here and start dropping little things on this top feather. Or tail, top part of the tail here I guess I should say. And I'm going to lighten up my kind of golden U-shaped highlights a little bit and put a front leading edge on them here. So this is yellow ochre that I'm going into with a little bit of titanium white. And I'm going to come in here on these little U-shaped areas and just kind of put a little leading edge highlight in on them all. Just creating a little bit of separation of color in there. Like that. And I'm going to take this same color here and I'm going to highlight out this edge here. Let's go along this edge of this back feather here. Paint along that. Sharpen that edge up a little bit. And I'm going to bring this color pretty much across, it looks like the whole top part of this tail here, kind of maybe where it's catching the most light here, and we'll lighten it up with this same highlight color as well. Like that. And I'm going to bring this in in a few places. I want to create a little better of a separation here between my tail and my wing. So let's bring in this little lighter color in here and then drop it in in a few places here where there's some of those layered feathers along the back. And then just keep working this highlight color into a few places through here to create those random layered feathers that are going on. Again, you don't have to get real specific with placement here. Just drop it in in some random places that look good to you. Scrub it in a little bit. And 
Now it looks like I need to bring this color in a little bit of an angle at the top of this tail here. You can see a little bit of that kind of separation of color going on there too. So let's bring it in up here. Drop it in like that. And yeah, maybe a place or two down through there. Again, you can kind of just keep piddling with this until you're happy with it. At some point you have to say, okay, that's good enough. <laughs> Now I can, I can see that I need some of that red kind of burnt sienna color back in here as well. So I'm going to use the spotter brush for that too. And let's go into some more of this burnt sienna and redden up some of these areas in here along this base of this tail. Let's drop in some of that color here in between all these little highlighted areas that we brought in. Again, it looks like kind of just some layered feathers in here. So I'm just going to kind of scrub this color in, in some of those darker gaps right in here reddening this up a little bit and we'll move and do the same in here between these areas so just covering up a little bit of that darkness with this redder color let me come in here and draw out looks like there's a couple of individual feathers you can see laying right in here that have that reddish color to them let's draw those out and then I'll probably need to come back and maybe separate them a little better with some dark color, but drop that in there. And that burnt sienna color is a little bit more vibrant here on this other wing that's in front of this little black and white barred feathers here. So let's brighten that up a little bit right in there with this color some more. Again, just kind of scrubbing it in not worrying about full coverage all right so we need to separate these feathers here on the back with just a little darker line so i'm going to take my little spotter brush here go into some burnt umber maybe a touch of black let's bring that in here and draw some separations here on these feathers along the back just throw some lines in there just so we can see some individual feathers all right so i'm continuing along with my little spotter brush here and we're just creating the illusion of some individual wings along the back here and how i'm doing that is is i'm going in with a lighter creamier color here of yellow ochre and white and i'm creating these tiny little u-shaped um places along the back of this wing here that just gives you the idea that there's some feathers laying back here now again you don't have to get real specific about the locations of these because this bird could he could ruffle his feathers here in a matter of seconds and they might lay down a little differently you're just trying to put some color in there to give the suggestion as we would say that there are some feathers laying in back there and they're just kind of these small little u shapes all along that back corner as you move up to the top here of this wing they're not really u-shapes anymore they start being longer lines that just kind of peel off the back so i'm just scrubbing in some of that color like that and now um you know depending on how detailed you want to get you can really start adding in some little minor things here and there this little wing here has got a little bit of lighter brown going on along this front leading edge here and then it darkens up a good bit then there's definitely some whiter areas that come in if i move right into some titanium white and just a hint of that creamier color we were using some white poking out right underneath there and in a place or two right along in there Also, there's a few 
almost white areas along the tips of these guys right down in here there's probably these feathers underneath that are showing it now I would say at this point I'm fairly content with the way that the tail and the top of this wing look overall. I'm just going to highlight out here this edge where the tail is separated from the, from the back of the bird right there. Basically, I want a nice sharp line between the back of his wing and that tail, so I just wanted to separate those like that. Now I'm going to continue to move up through here, so um, we've got some more burnt sienna coming into the mix. Obviously, things are reddening up and lightening up, so just a hair of titanium white as well. This area back in here behind his eyes got a little redder color to it so again i'm just kind of scrubbing in this color on top of that dark that we've got i'm not full coverage i'm not replacing that color i'm just starting to make it look a little more red with that burnt sienna down along here as well this is a good bit lighter in color so let's go with a little more titanium white, burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre in here. And this area underneath, this white area here is a good bit lighter. And we've got like some individual feathers in here, so we're going to kind of go with our little U shapes right in here to create that illusion as well and then with our creamier color here of yellow ochre and white that we've been doing our other little U shapes with we'll add in the bottom parts of these little U's that come in here there's several in this vicinity again don't have to get specific because this bird could change the way his feathers are laying real quick so we're just kind of getting color in the area that we want it getting the ideas in place of the feathers and this white just kind of lingers out and carries on down through some of this area here so just kind of scrub in that lighter creamier color in a few random places coming back same way with up into this area a little bit just carry that up in there a little and just randomly touch it in there you know that had to be specific and now I'm going to carry a little bit of that burnt sienna with a little bit of raw umber back into it and a little titanium white I'm going to carry that in to our white area a little bit because it's not all white there's some dark in here and again just some random little marks that come up in here just to break it up He's got a few going in right in here, looks like. 
there's definitely some stuff going on under under the eye so there's a dark area in here a little more of a dark area that I'm scrubbing in right down in there random patches of stuff all along there and even realistically down into here all right now let's darken up some burnt sienna and raw umber here and work on this line here above it's coming from the top or back of the eye here up into this white a little bit it's just kind of a broken line in there so let's break that up and this front edge as well break that up And I'm just randomly touching color in here at this point. Now let's move that color to the top of that white line again and break up that top edge a little bit. And it looks a little more red here towards the back of the head than it does the top. So I'm going to carry this burnt sienna color along the back of the head. About halfway up looks like and in the top of the head itself just the way it's catching the light I guess more burnt umber a little bit of titanium white to lighten that up And we're going to kind of dab this in here to give the indication of a little bit of a feather texture here along the top of this head. So don't full coverage that, just kind of dot it in there, leaving a little bit of dark gaps here and there. And that pretty much carries all the way down to his beak. And then I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit more with just a tad bit more titanium white and really lighten up some areas here across the top, dotting it in. Leaving the bottom part here that gets closer to the eye a little darker. Now that same deal is kind of going on in this patch in front of the eye, so while we're working with that, let's come in here and lighten up this area. Again, don't full coverage this, just kind of tap it and dot it in here, leaving a little bit of that dark still there, because there is some darker areas in there. Leave this piece going up the beak dark. And then while we're working that same color, let's go down through here. It looks like it carries just a little ways down here below the, the beak. Down in here a little bit. There's a white ring, or a light ring, right below the eye, so I'm going to put that in. This is mostly going to be a titanium white deal right now here, okay? So titanium white and just an ever so slight touch of raw umber to cream it out slightly, but it's going to be pretty white. Go right below this eye and drop that in. It doesn't go all the way around the eye, it just kind of goes to there. Top edge also. And 
All right, now let's go into more titanium white. So we're really whitening up this mix. I mean, it's, it's verging on pure white at this point. And come in here and drop some white highlight in in this area above the eye. Touching this in, don't completely cover it up. Just again, it's it's highlighting with almost pure titanium white. That color comes all the way down to the back. And I'm just tapping that color in. Let's do the same thing below the eye now. Again, verging just to almost pure titanium white, not quite. And randomly tap that in under here. Some places coming off the bottom of this beak. And just tap it in as you kind of work your way down that face. This creates the idea that there's some really small feathers and things going on in here. If you just kind of tap that color in and you don't full coverage with it. It goes all the way back into this area. And also, for the most part, completely all this stuff here underneath the underneath the beak and the chin I guess and these are small little downward brush strokes here because it looks like that's the way that those small little feathers are essentially laying in that area again I'm not I'm not full coveraging still I'm just dragging in some of this almost white highlight I'm gonna leave it a little darker right underneath the beak because it looks like it is a little darker just the way it uh, again, the way the light's probably hitting, I'm not going to take that color all the way up there. And I'm going to cream that color out just a little bit. A little bit of yellow ochre in it. And start to fade this line in right here a little bit. I'm just kind of scrubbing that creamier color in right there. Again, not covering everything up, just kind of scrubbing it in. And it looks like we can do that color along back here. This um, is kind of a splotchy deal going on back in here. Something to that effect. All right, now we need to add a good bit more yellow ochre to this mix. And just a hint of raw umber to this mix. To start working down these chest areas. I'm thinking I'm a little too dark here. I'm going to have to lighten this up a little bit. It's kind of a real creamy yellowy looking deal he's got going on. So this is going to be leaning mostly in yellow ochre. And a little titanium white. And just a hint of raw umber in there. And 
And with this spotter brush, I'm just going to just going to drag in this color with some short choppy brush strokes as I move that direction. And I'm still a little on the dark side. I gotta lighten that creamy up even more. So more titanium white into this mix. And this line from his chin up here, it really just kind of fades in. It's not a real hard transition, it doesn't look like. It just kind of goes from a whiter color down to this creamier deal. It just kind of fades itself in. Now you can see a little bit of dark areas here and there poking out, so I'm not going to completely cover it up, but I'm going to carry this nice creamy color all the way down the front of the belly here. I'm going to take it down. looks like he starts to shadow up right below there, so let's carry it down to about in that area. And then I'm just going to make small little brush strokes coming down with that creamier color. that I need to mix more up of, apparently. And if you just kind of scrub it in with a small brush like this, you're not going to get full coverage. But you'll get nice texture of what's underneath. There'll be some darker areas that still poke through, which is good because there are some darker areas that are still kind of in there. And again, this is titanium white with a little yellow ochre in it, just creating this creamy color. And as we go further down in the bird here, like I'm mixing some more color now that's a little heavy on the yellow ochre. So I'm going to move down in here a little bit where it is a little more goldeny color. And just again, short, choppy little brush strokes, not looking for full coverage. That's pretty close to what I had going on up top. Not as much of a difference as I thought, so I'm going to go back to where I was coming down. Short, little choppy brush strokes with this spotter brush. It does not cover up all of our dark underneath. It's going to give you the look you want. And again, depending on how detailed you want this, I mean, you can come in here with a bigger brush and just blob this on if that's what you want to do. I'm trying to lean towards a lot of realism here in this look, so I'm taking my time. Small brush strokes. Have to keep loading in more paint. But my end result will be what I'm happy with, and that's all that really matters. So, all right, we start to get a little further down here. We have a little bit of darker stuff going on. So I'm going to keep working until I get about two thirds of the way down here with this color.
Now it looks like it stays fairly light mm, all along our shady edge over here. So let's bring it down through there. And what you'll notice here is it's, it starts to be a little more gaps between highlight and dark as it's moving further down. I'm going to introduce a little bit of raw umber into this mix. And start from the bottom here where I've got it the darkest. This bottom edge is fairly clean and consistent looking, so I'm going to go with almost full coverage down here, not quite, leaving a little bit of that dark stuff that was underneath. And I think I need to darken that up again. I may have lightened it up too much. Let's go back into some more raw umber here. That's better. This bottom edge is obviously the darkest area. So we're going to try to leave it the darkest area. It's now that color as you move up will start to lighten up in some areas. Basically working backwards now, starting from the bottom here with my darkest color and merging it back up where I was a little bit lighter. So it looks like we've got an area of transition right in here. That we need to kind of mesh these two together. So we got our creamier, lighter color coming down, meeting our darker color. We just kind of make a transitional fade between the two. Something about like that and then we can come back on a couple of subsequent passes and create the fade and the blend and the detail out about like we want but all we're trying to do is go for a little lighter color down to a little darker color and let that dry for a minute and we'll come back and work with the details on it and try to tweak it a little bit. Right now that that has had some a couple minutes to dry I'm going to go back to my little quarter inch angled brush here to finish off these feathers along the chest and the belly down in here. So we've worked to transition down with that spotter brush just kind of globbing color in but it's created this nice little textury looking feathery deal but in some places I want to I want to smooth that out a little bit so we're going to start back up here at the top and we're going to go again mostly into titanium white with just a hint of yellow ochre to cream it up just a, just a tiny bit, not a lot. But just so that no, we're not working with pure titanium white here. And we're going to fade in some of this where it's not quite as blotchy. And I'm just touching it in a few areas and just kind of dragging down. I 
just cleaning things up a little bit so it's not quite as splotchy looking now you could leave it that way again if you wanted to I'm, I'm gonna smooth it out just a little bit just for my tastes as I move further down here I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow ochre to this mix and in a couple of places again I'm just going to drag that color down a little bit and I'm gonna work back and forth with now more titanium white back on it pulling it down a little bit we're just kinda of fading it down smoothing it out a little bit that's all I'm doing And so I really need to get some kind of alert on my camera back there when that SD card gets full and it cuts me off because unless I just keep looking at it, I don't know. Um, so what I was doing here, using this quarter inch brush, I was working my way down this bird here, fading these colors in. So this is titanium white and yellow ochre. And more on the titanium white side of things up here, and I just kept working my way down the bird with this, bringing in this color, just dragging it down, dragging it down about halfway through here a little more yellow ochre coming into the mix and I just kept dragging it down dra dragging it down as I got here to the bottom a little bit more of the burnt umber down in here into the mix just to create a little bit darker underneath so you just keep working your way down dragging that color with this brush little small brush strokes at a time again you got more white in the mix up here where it's brighter you got more yellow ochre in your mix here in the midsection, and you got a little bit more raw umber in your mix down here in the bottom. Small little brush strokes to fill that in. And I just, you know, kind of smoothed it out a little bit to create um, a, a nicer effect for me personally, um, just adding to the realism. And then once I finished that, I was moved up here onto the beak work here. I went back to my little small spotter brush, and I cleaned up the edge here a little bit. We darkened up the bottom end right here. Just a little bit of a dark gray black mix coming out here to the tip. And then lightened up this area here with some light gray. Added in the little nostril mark right there. A little dark piece of black basically. And that's essentially what I was doing when um, during the time that the camera had shut off on me. And I didn't notice it so just cleaned up the edges of the beak a little bit. Now I moved in here and rounded out my eyeball a little bit better and added a hint of a gray sheen to the top of the eyeball and touched in just a little bit more of the titanium white right along the center there to create our little glow from our eye. Now really all that's left for me to do is break up this line a little bit of this white on top of this head. So I'm going into titanium white. And just a touch of just a touch of yellow ochre to cream it out slightly. And I'm going to come up in here and break up this line here a little bit. So it's not such a straight edge. And then going back into a little more white still, adding a little bit of highlight to that, dotting it in here and there. Again, not full coverage, just tapping it in. Just breaking up my hard edges and lines here is all I'm really doing. And he's got a little 
a bit more shine right there to the top edge of that beak above that nostril so we're just going to add a little bit right there and now on this top edge up here burnt sienna mostly burnt sienna just a, just a hint of titanium white and dotting that in to highlight the top of that head a little bit. Maybe just a hint more titanium white right in here. Top of the head. And then carry a little more burnt sienna in back here along the back until it just kind of drops off into that darker brown that we've got up there. Something about like that. Same thing behind the eyeball here. Burnt sienna, just a touch of titanium white to drop in some highlight and just dotting it in. to make it look like small feather texture. And you just do this till you're kind of content with it. I'm going to break that line up a little bit. And this line up here a little bit. Again, I'm just trying to get rid of some of my hard edges that I've got going on up there. That's a little better. Maybe a bit of a hard edge back there too. And realistically, I think other than the feet, I'm pretty much done on that bird. So I'm going to do these feet real quick. See how we feel about the finished product. So let's create ourselves um, a color here. His feet are kind of a, I don't know what you would call it. It's kind of a creamy color with a hint of pink to it so let's go with our creamy yellow ochre and white mix and drop in just a tiny bit of red and I mean red's pretty powerful stuff so we're not putting much red in there just a touch of it let's come in here and see what that gives us it's not bad And he's got a couple of claws here. These birds have like three that come out on the front. One that goes along the back. Now this leg under the body is going to be a bit more shaded. So I'm only going to bring that color about halfway up. put his little claws in there added just a tad bit more titanium white to the mix for those couple of little claws hanging off the end of those feet Alright, so now we just need to vary up our color a little bit there with a little bit of highlight to it and a little bit of dark area to it just to make that leg look a little more interesting. So we're going to go back into our creamy pink kind of mix.
brighten it up just a little bit along the top edges of things with just a hint of titanium white to it. And then I'm going to darken things up a little bit with just a smidge of, a smidge, that's a technical term, raw umber, and come in here and create a couple of places that look like maybe joints in these feet. Just darken up a couple places. Dot a few things along the leg itself. Anything to just make it a little more interesting with some color variation. All right, now I think I want to go back one more pass with titanium white on that mix. Just to add a little bit of highlight along a few places where maybe the light's catching it the most. So let's go right along the front edge of this leg. Maybe the top of that toe, the top of that toe right along the front edge of that tops of a couple of the claws there alright I'm pretty happy with that so that is our finished Carolina Wren if you guys painted this Wren with us hopefully you enjoyed that one and came out with a good finished product you're happy with. If you painted a different bird, followed along with this technique, hopefully your bird has turned out. And I'll show you now the finished product. There is our Carolina Wren hanging out on that fence post right there. And the finished painting that will be delivered here in about a week. A little foggy scene there with the wren in the front, a barn hanging out in the background there. We're going to call it a wrap on this particular painting. Until next time, happy painting everyone.